Well, happy Friday to you. I went a little bit long yesterday, so I'll try to keep this one short. We're looking at the other Philip and the Philip seen in the book of Acts. We already saw number one, he had an honorable reputation. Now we're looking at the fact that he had a heart for the Lord. And we saw that that heart was seen in the fact that he went to Samaria, a place the Jews hated because he did not see people through their racial lens, but through their spiritual lens. And there was a lot of fruit. People are coming to Jesus. In fact, it appears that a sorcerer named Simon comes to Jesus, even gets baptized. But then when the apostles are sent down to give credibility to the fact that Samaritans are getting saved and they lay their hands on the Samaritans and they receive the Holy Spirit. We saw last yesterday that Simon the sorcerer is like, man, I want that power. I'll even pay you for that power. And that shows us right there. His faith wasn't genuine. He received Jesus hopefully for what he could get for power. Now, how do we know that this is not a real conversion? Well, listen to what Peter says to him in verse 20 of Acts chapter 8. Peter looks at him and says, may your silver perish with you. You're going to perish. May your silver perish with you because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. Then he goes on and says, you have no part or portion in this matter for your heart is not right before God. So it's very obvious, though Simon made a profession of faith, it wasn't genuine. Yes, he listened to Philip preach. Yes, he even got baptized. But his real fruit comes out. And I told you yesterday, and I think it's an important principle. We can't be the judge on if someone's decision for Jesus is genuine or not. Because the truth of the matter is we don't know that. All we can do is share the gospel with them. And if they make a decision, we have to leave it to the Lord. Was that genuine? Was it not? It's very obvious from the case of Simon. It was not a genuine conversion. However, that's not going to be Simon's only one-on-one, or or Philip's only one-on-one encounter. He's also going to have another one-on-one encounter. It's one of the most spectacular you're going to see in the Bible. It's going to happen with an unnamed guy from Ethiopia. And we're going to see a divine appointment. I just want to kind of read a little section of it to you. And then we'll talk about it tomorrow. Let me read Acts 8, 25. So when they had solemnly testified and spoken the word of the Lord, the apostles went back to Jerusalem. They're preaching the gospel to many villages of the Samaritans. Listen. But an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Philip, get up and go. I want you to go south to the road that descends from Jerusalem to Gaza. And then it adds in parentheses these words. It was a desert road. In other words, it wasn't going to be a fun place to go. It wasn't going to be comfortable. But you know what God was doing with Philip? He was setting up a divine appointment that would result in a genuine conversion. It's one of the most spectacular one-on-one stories in all the Bible. We're going to look at it beginning tomorrow. But let's pray together right now and ask God, even if it means going out of our comfort zone, that he would set up a divine appointment for us. So Father, thank you that you do take time in our lives to set up divine appointments. And usually when you do that, you take us out of our comfort zone. God, I pray you would set up one of those divine appointments for us today. And may we be willing to leave our comfort zone to be part of what you're doing. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope you'll share it on your Facebook page. Hope you'll join us again Monday as we see this amazing story as we continue to look at Philip who had a heart for the lost.